Rise, Meg. The Force will be with you. Teeny, teeny. Hello my dear friends and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Needless to say, the Mandalorian season 2 finale left us with a lot of questions. Will Grogu and Din reunite anytime soon? Will Bo-Katan fight Din for the Darksaber in season 3? And one question which is a bit less evident, where did Luke take Grogu at the end of the Mandalorian's second season? And where will he train him if he does? Well, in today's video, we're going to be exploring a Star Wars theory that I've been working on. It's why I believe that Luke takes Grogu to Arc 2 Island and how this journey would be the reason that he would later favour this location to become a recluse. But I will state that this is not the location of Luke's eventual Jedi Academy. While we don't know where this was located in canon since it was never revealed to us in The Last Jedi, it could very well be Yavin 4, as Legends tells us. So let's start by filling in a few gaps. Luke acquires Grogu in 9 ABY, which is still a few years before he starts his Jedi Academy in about 15 ABY, presumably on Yavin 4. As such, we can assume that Grogu is Luke's first apprentice. During this period of Luke's life, he isn't searching for Force-sensitive children yet. Instead, he's doing a deep dive investigation into the origins of the Jedi Order. Luke had been to Moraband and found the ancient Jedi text that we saw in Episode 8 and uncovered records to learn the history of the Jedi, which dated back centuries. We also know that during his journeys he was led to Arc 2, where he discovered the records of the Jedi librarian Jocasta Nu, which uncovered some key details surrounding how the Jedi rose and fell. Now before rescuing Grogu, Luke might have decided that Arc 2 is the most appropriate location to train Grogu given its Force-sensitive history. But there are other reasons why Luke might have selected Arc 2 as well. Firstly, it had the perfect conditions for a first-time master like Luke, who had acquired his very first apprentice. Not only is it out of the way in the unknown regions, and therefore discreet, and as far as Luke was concerned, hidden from foes, but it also contained essential texts that could guide Luke as a new master as he instructed Grogu. Another thing that we have to factor in are the caretakers. Grogu is still young at this point in the timeline. As much as Luke is a great Jedi master, he doesn't exactly have experience as a father figure or a provider. The Lane, who inhabited Arc 2 Island not only maintained the Jedi Temple structure as an act of devotion, but were also matronly to Force-sensitive visitors who agreed not to disrupt the natural landscape. Therefore, Luke would take care of the Jedi side of things, whilst the caretakers could provide Grogu with all of his essential needs as a child. This is especially true when Luke had to help whenever the New Republic duty called and therefore was not physically present with Grogu. Another crucial part of this theory is that Arc 2 Island is not necessarily the first location that Luke chose to take Grogu to, but it is the location that he goes with due to a huge event that we know takes place in Luke's life around the same time. I'm of course talking about his confrontation with Snoke. We know that Luke faced off against Snoke sometime before Ben Solo was born. This would take place shortly after Luke adopted Grogu. When Luke hesitated to train Ben, part of the reason for this hesitation was that he feared Snoke's influence on him. As we learn in The Rise of Kylo Ren, Luke had encountered Snoke and left him scarred before training Ben, indicating that the two encountered each other during Luke's travels. What if this encounter happened on whatever planet Luke had initially planned to take Grogu to while he was in possession of the child? Now I know a lot of people think that Grogu's blood was used to make Snoke, but as I've stated in another video, I think Snoke is already alive during the events of The Mandalorian and is behind Moff Gideon's cloning project to bring back Palpatine. This could explain why Snoke was looking for Grogu, because Moff Gideon lied in the season 2 finale and the Imperial Remnant is not finished with Grogu just yet. With Gideon now arrested and in custody of the New Republic, Snoke is after Grogu, and since our little green guy is with Luke, this might explain how he tracks him down and finds him. After this encounter, Luke knows that he has a duty to protect Grogu, and so he takes him to the most discreet, force-sensitive location he can think of. Arc 2, where he can't be found. Ultimately, I think that Grogu is going to be back with Mando very soon. Luke will start to train him, but Grogu is going to reject this training and opt to continue his space journeys with Din instead. Not only has he got an emotional attachment to Mando, but the dark memories that came with being a survivor of Order 66 while losing your fellow classmates at the hands of Lord Vader are far too much to want to resume such training. Grogu leaving Luke results in Skywalker, who is confident in his abilities, seeking out other Force sensitives across the galaxy, and so he will begin his Jedi Academy without Grogu in a different location. Luke abandons Arc 2 and doesn't return until much later on in his life, after his Jedi Temple burns at the hands of Kylo Ren. 
In this timeline, Grogu avoids the events that play out at Luke's temple, and his non-force sensitive antics and eventual reunion with Mando are probably the reason we don't ever get to see him in the sequels. Will Grogu become a Mandalorian, or perhaps the second ever Mandalorian Jedi after Tar Vizsla? Now I know there are a lot of sequel haters in my audience and I know not all of you guys liked the treatment of Luke's character in episode 8, but now that we know that Jon Favreau seemingly wants to link the Mandalorian to the sequels, it's possible that we will get some backstory to why Luke turned out the way he did. And part of this could be to do with Arc 2 Island. Regardless of what you guys thought of Episode 8 The Last Jedi, you have to admit that Arc 2 was a pretty neat new location. From space, Arc 2 appeared to be a world of nothing but deep blue oceans orbiting twin stars. According to the Star Wars book, Arc 2 was the birthplace of the Jedi Order. Before the Great Jedi Purge and the Age of the Empire, Jedi scholars argued that a number of locations could be considered to be the birthplace of the Order, but the scholars argued that Arc 2, Tython and Coruscant could be all considered candidate worlds for the Order's birth. I think that since we've already seen Tython in The Mandalorian Season 2, this could be a very good location to take Grogu to. So what do you guys think of my theory? Do you think it's possible that we will see Arc 2 in Season 3 of Mando? Is this where Luke is taking Grogu? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, please be sure to give me a big fat like, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and also please consider going over to my Patreon page. For just 2 or $10 a month, you get exclusive access to content that's not found here on YouTube. And that includes my Star Wars Explained series, High Republic readings, my Star Wars Forgotten Characters series, and also my podcast Megasodes. As I stated in yesterday's video, right now is a very hard time to be a Star Wars fan because we're anticipating all of the upcoming series and it's just a waiting game, but I hope I can keep you guys entertained in the meantime by keeping you up to date with all of the Star Wars news and giving you my theories. So I will see you all tomorrow. Have a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you are in the galaxy.